Hey everybody, welcome to part 14 and our final part in our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In this series we've been using VBA and Access to push data to an Excel spreadsheet and we have been using VBA to create graphs in that spreadsheet. In this video we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to the data series in that graph using the VBA from Access. So let's head on over to our form uh, with our button so we can see what graph we're starting with. Okay, again, we've got two data series on here right now, um, a gross sales and a gross margin series. We have a solid fill right now. These are the default colors that Excel gave us. We're going to modify those in just a minute. Let's head over to our code window. So the first thing I want to do is change the colors that are in each bar in our chart. Like I said a moment ago, the, the colors that we have currently are the ones that Excel gave us by default. And I want to soften those colors a little bit. And uh, we do that by working on the series collection. This is a collection of each data series in your chart. It's indexed. So the uh, index one will be the first data series we're working on. It's the leftmost one in the graph. And it was blue. And we're going to work on the interior color property and set it equal to an RGB value of uh, 125, 165, 213. Now I'm going to copy in the same thing for data series 2. You have to watch me type that and save that and then produce the graph and see what we have. So you see the, the, the colors here a little bit softer than what we had before. The red's almost a pink. This is a, a, a very uh, soft blue. Now I'm going to add, I want to add a border around each data series. Make it stand out just a little bit more. Give it just a little, little tiny bit of a pop. And again, we're going to work on I'm using the series collection again. Our first series collection, and this is the border, not color. And we'll copy in a different blue, a, a darker blue to surround that lighter blue. And we'll do the same thing on the second series. This is a darker red to surround that light red, that pink, and that's what we got. So they're standing out a little bit more. Now, if you zoom in close to this graph, you can see that whichever data series we modified last, in this case it was the red one, it's hard to see when you're not really zoomed in, but the border of the red is overlapping the border of the blue. And we are going to mess around a little bit with the uh, with the spacing of these bars. Let's see what we can do with that. There are a couple things we can do. We can work with the chart groups collection. This is this is a the groupings of the charts that you have in your graph. This is the first. We only have one. And we can use the gap width property. I'm going to set it equal to 10. And what that's going to do for us is not what we want. Alright, see what it did? Um, it made the gap, the gap width property makes the gap between each x-axis plot, whatever number you specify, in this case we specified 10, and it did that by making each bar wider. And that's not what I was looking for. What I'm looking for is to space out each bar from each other within the set. So we'll do that instead, still using chart groups 1, here, but we're going to use the overlap property. This takes a positive or a negative number. If you give it a positive number, it makes the bars overlap. If you give it a negative number, a bigger, bigger negative number. Let's get rid of. Let's get rid of that guy. Let's have a look at what that gives us. Okay, now we're back to having space between our horizontal plots, and each bar now is spaced out a little bit. We got some space in there. And that's what I was looking for. Let's head over back to the code window now. Now we did a solid fill up here on each bar. Now I want to work on putting a gradient fill instead. I'm going to set up a width on our data series again. I'm going to use the format fill. I'll do an end width there. So I'm going to copy in the two-color gradient statement. Now we saw this in part 13 of this series where we used uh, the two-color gradient to fill in the background 
of our chart area. This is the same statement again. Okay, so it's, we're using two color gradient. It takes two arguments, style, which tells us what type of gradient we want. A, a gradient horizontal gives us a, a horizontal line, if you will. Your, your color starts at the, at, at the top or at the bottom, and it's, it gradually fades as you go up or gradually fades as you go down, depending upon the value you put in variant. I'm going to use variant equals one. In this case, that's going to put our four color at the top and our back color at the bottom. I'm going to do copy those things right here. What I've got here, our four color is a, a, a light red, and our back color is an even lighter red. Actually, this is blue. Take that back to blue. Let's see what we get here. And what we have now is a, a darker blue at the top and a lighter blue at the bottom. Still surrounded by our border. I'm going to do the same thing for our second data series. It's the same statements here. Two color gradient, gradient horizontal, variant one. Just different colors in the four color and the back color. Good. We have gradients in our bars, and just like in part 13, we can we can affect where this transition occurs. Okay, by using a gradient stop statement. Let's copy one of those. I'm going to copy that into just the um, just a series of ones so we can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on gradient stop two. That's the that's the stop for the second color, the back color. And gradient stop two position. And remember, this is a these positions are run between 0 and 1. So 0 is the default position for your 4 color, and 1 is the default position for your back color. And if you, you put a decimal in one of these positions, it pushes the transition of one color to the next in whatever direction you push that, that decimal. So putting a point 2 on the second, or on the back color, should push the transition from the four to the back up the bar. And that's what we see here. We have all of our dark blue is concentrated up here at the top, and we have a, a pretty solid, um, steady fill all the way down with the light blue. And you can contrast that with the red, which we did not modify, where it's a pretty even fade from top to bottom. All right, now um, I'm gonna move on now to data labels. I want to show you something that I did to the chart before we move on. Notice that um, in the previous videos, I had very large numbers over here on my y-axis. I had decimals in my data, and I had um, you know, this uh, 100,000 here was actually 100, was actually a dollar sign, 100 comma, and then three more zeros, a decimal sign, and two more zeros. And it's taken up a huge amount of space over there on the left. And I want to work with data labels now, which would be putting a number over the top of each series. And we're simply not going to have enough horizontal room over each bar for a big wide number that's about eight characters long. So what I did was first I removed the uh, decimals from my source data and I also removed the dollar signs from my source data and then I changed the display scale on the graph to thousands. So it took three zeros off of each number here. You can do that if, if your lowest number is at least some kind of a thousand. Okay, if you had less than a thousand, you would probably wouldn't want to do that because then you'd be showing zeros over there. So let's take a look at the, the code I changed for that really quickly. Up at the top here, I've got a place where I'm formatting the columns. This is where I had a dollar sign here, a decimal and a zero, zero. Okay, so you see getting rid of the decimal and the zero, zero, and getting rid of the dollar sign shortened our source data that's being displayed and then being carried into the grid. And the second thing I did was I changed the display scale. That is, here it is, axis XL value, display unit, XL thousands. We looked at that in an earlier video, but uh, I'm retrieving it now because it's uh, of good use to us now for putting these labels on chart. So if we want to display labels on our graph, we need to tell Excel again that we want labels. So we're going to use the series collection as data labels property. 
and we'll set it equal to true. And we'll do the same thing for series two. And then take a quick look. And there you go. Now we have each number right over each bar. Now some people like that, some people don't. We can do some things to those labels. There's lots of things we can do to them. I'm going to only do two things though in this video. We can change the font color, for instance. We can operate on the font. So you have all the other font things that we have done. There's font style. There's the actual name of the font. I'm going to just mess with the color here. And I'm going to set the color of the label equal to the same color I used for each bar's border. So those were a darker color. And do that. So now so we've got colors and numbers there. The only other thing I'm going to do to the data labels is play with their position. You can you can move the data labels around a little bit, and what you can do with with them is going to depend on what type of chart you have. And I'm going to modify the position of series two only and see what's happened here. What I what we're using here is the series collection collection again. I'm working on the second data series. Data labels dot position, and this takes a set of constants. I've got those displayed over here. There's quite a few of them. Which of these you can use is going to depend on what type of chart you have. Now I have a clustered column chart right here. and Only two of these operate on the clustered column chart. If you have other types of charts, you'll find that others of these will work and, and, and perhaps the ones that I'm using here won't work. And it's going to depend on, like I said, which type of chart you have. Also, a quick note on changing the colors on other types of charts. We were using the series collection to change colors of our bars. And that's because we had a clustered bar, a clustered column chart. And in this type of chart, you would want all of series one to be the same color so they match up. You have this visual clue that, that each of these numbers is a gross sales number. Each of these blue numbers is a, is a gross sales number. And each red number is a gross margin number. Now, another type of chart, say a pie chart, that's a completely different structure. A, a pie chart, you usually will, will be plotting a single data series, but you'd want even each slice of your pie to have a different color. So if you're going to modify the, the colors of each slice, you're actually going to be working with a data point rather than a data series. So you go inside your data series and then use the points collection and, and modify your colors there. Um, You'd have to be careful with the pie chart because sometimes uh, pie charts have an unknown number of slices when you're at your, your software development stage. So you might need to produce a, I don't know if you want to produce a very long list of colors you would cycle through uh, or, uh, or some sort of dynamic, um, you know, some sort of dynamic allocation if you're going to take control of, a, of the colors of a pie chart. Well, that's it for this video and this video series. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. In my next series, I plan to use Excel to pull data from Access. So we're going to flip the process around. And as usual, I'll have a link to the code in the video description down below. See you next time.